Representative Angie Nixon won re-election to the Florida House last year in District 13, uh, covering parts of the west side and northwest Jacksonville. Uh, The two-term legislator is one of just two Democrats representing Northeast Florida in the House um, and is one of the leading progressive voices in the state with national media hits and MSNBC and other outlets. She's also really devoted to constituent services, so it's not just TV hits for her. But she joins us right now in studio. Welcome to First Coast Connect, Representative Nixon. Thank you for having me here, AG. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, thank you for getting here on this rainy day. I mean, I, I tried to tell you to bring the bring the boat <laughs> <laughs> or the swim fins. Exactly. Uh, we got a lot here, uh, Representative Nixon. So um, first thing first, uh, the budget was signed um, earlier this month. Ooh, child. Um, and there are a few line item vetoes in it. Um, and, and some are saying that the Santa's punished minority legislators, minority communities. Um, is that an accurate assessment? Uh, I definitely believe it's an accurate assessment. And the free state of Florida is actually for sale based on campaign contributions. And that's very unfortunate for Floridians across the state. What, what in what of your projects got um, vetoed this time around? So I only had uh, a few projects and it was allocations. Can you believe it to a charter school? Me of all people looking out for a charter school. And even that was vetoed. Wow. Look, at the end of the day, I have no problem with things like choice, but I just want to make sure that there's parity across the board. But based on Governor DeSantis, we know that uh, he was being um, a little petty as well as vindictive as it relates to his this veto process. And it's just it's just very discouraging the state of uh, governor, our governorship here in, in the state of Florida, um, the fact that uh, he vetoed more than $3 million to mitigate flooding down in South Florida, it only illustrates that we have a governor who is so consumed with political ambition and running for president um, that he doesn't care about Floridians. The fact that that mitigation would have uh, impacted um, South Florida, similarly, you know, I just I keep being reminded of when South Florida was underwater earlier in the year and he was out campaigning in Iowa. And so now he's trying to stick it to majority Democratic uh, counties and things like that or folks that decided not to endorse him. It's just rather upsetting. Um, The fact of the matter is that we took an oath to, you know, look out for Floridians here across our state. I did not sign up to to play a role in his campaign and for him to gain points for a base of voters. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of people say that, you know, when he came in his first year or so, he was pretty moderate on, on certain issues. Um, but you know, once Donald Trump lost and once COVID-19 happened, it seems that he took a, a turn to the right. Yeah, a sharp turn to the right. At the end of the day, many of the policies that he's been pushing and he signed on to, um, they're going to hurt people. I don't know about y'all, but um, attacks on LGBTQ folks, attacks on black history, book bans, it does nothing to lower the cost of property insurance. It does nothing to lower the the rising cost of rents. It does nothing uh, to stop the mass exodus of teachers in our schools. In fact, it actually exacerbates it. And that is very upsetting. And, you know, the fact that I was punished specifically for basically educating people about what's been going on here this legislative session just goes to show you the the way that Florida has been has been governed we've had over 30 years of republican leadership in our state and folks are hurting folks are truly hurting I get people calling my office every day stating they can no longer afford Florida or they have to move out of fear. And that is something that I will continue to be vocal about and to push back against. And, you know, I may not have been able to bring money home, but what I am happy to say that I've been able to do is to help ensure that over 50 folks were able to get housing, right? Being able to navigate um, the the different um, agencies to ensure that my constituents have a fighting chance to, to flourish here in this state, especially when you have an administration um, and a Republican-led legislature that is trying to do the opposite. Yeah, I mean, you have a really diverse district, too. I mean, it extends from Riverside and Avondale. 
um, you know, to a lot of the north side and west side. So you get a lot of different communities in your district. Oh, yes. A lot of different communities and a lot of different issues. But at the end of the day, I'm not a representative just for progressive folks. I'm not a representative just for black folks. I represent everyone, no matter who they love, no matter uh, what God they worship, if they worship a God, no matter how much they, they make. You know, I just want to look out for all Floridians because all Floridians, no matter their zip code, they should have the opportunity to live healthy, prosperous and safe. And again, unfortunately, we have a governor and a Republican led legislature that cares more about corporations than they do uh, Floridians. Yeah, um, I want to talk about a bill that actually uh, got signed recently uh, protecting auto dealers, Mm. except for Tesla. Mm -hmm. Uh, Basically, Mm -hmm. it it makes... um, where you can't buy them directly from the manufacturer. Mm-hmm. Um, you're one of two uh, people to vote against it. Anna V. Eskamani was the other one. Um, were you against it in committees, and how did you get right. to your position so, on it? So initially, I was, I was not against it in committee. They had the auto dealers that came out um, and made their case. No one came to speak with me. Um, but then I started doing a little bit more and digging and, and spoke with um, – the manufacturers and spoke with uh, some of the auto dealers. And I realized, you know, at a time where inflation is going up, rents are going up, property insurance is going up, food is going up, like people need transportation to get to their jobs um, and and to just have a good way of life, right? To be able to move around, uh, to be accessible to folks. And so this bill actually is going to make it harder. It could make it potentially make it harder for folks by charging them more if they have to go to a dealer. And that's not fair. If, if he was going to, uh, you know, punish manufacturers, he should have done the same thing to Tesla. And so, you know, you think he was trying to curry favor with uh, Elon Musk? I mean, you know, he announced his campaign on Twitter. Right. And so, you know, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Five four nine two nine three seven. If you want to get on the conversation with Angie Nixon here. Um, speaking of Governor DeSantis, he's in California mm-hmm. today. Uh, he was in Nevada over the weekend. He was in Sacramento yesterday, where uh, the legislature actually paid for him to uh, fly um, undocumented immigrants uh, from Texas to Sacramento. Mm. Um, you know, so you know this campaign and the campaign stunt of flying people, that's that's coming at the expense of Floridians, correct? It is definitely coming at the expense of Floridians. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how, again, like property insurance is going up, right? People don't have access to mental uh, health resources uh, as much as they need. Um, a ton of infrastructure projects were just vetoed, but yet he wants to Um, use this as a political stunt to fly migrants across the country and stick it to the libs, as as though he says. Um, That's just ridiculous. The fact of the matter is that I know we are now going to have um, a 10% drop in GDP based off of his attacks, his frequent attacks on undocumented uh, folks on migrants. Where do you get that 10% stuff? Um, I have to pull it up, but I read um, an article uh, that did some numbers, and I'll pull it up. But, um, yeah, so it's just it's absolutely absurd. Again, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt people. Many of his policies are going to hurt people. And so now we're going to have um, crops that are untended. Now we're going to have houses that aren't going to be uh, built. Uh, and just now, it's, it's going to hurt Floridians all around the board. Yeah. And, and so why did the legislature ha- let this happen? I mean, it's just the supermajority Republicans. It's, and- it's the supermajority Republicans, and folks are afraid of the governor. He's a bully. He attacked Disney. So, of course, you know, legislators are going to be afraid that he's going to veto their projects. Look what he did to Joe Gruder, someone who he used to walk. Senator from Sarasota. <laughs> exactly. Someone he used to walk lockstep with. And because he endorsed Trump, he vetoed the majority of his projects. He even vetoed a project as it relates to um the recruitment of nursing nurses and things like that to his county. And when we're facing a massive health care 
a shortage uh, of uh, a shortage of healthcare workers. For him to veto that just illustrates that he doesn't care about Floridians. All he cares about is being president. We do not, we cannot afford him uh, becoming the president of the United States. There's going to be more uh, crazy antics like this. Um, and, and again, it's just going to continually hurt people. Like I, I cannot emphasize that enough. People are hurting here in Florida, and we just need a leader who's going to stand up um, and and look out, look out for everyone, look out for the least of these. Yeah, I mean, and I heard a story, and this is something that you know you you may have insight onto, and you may be able to speak to it more more directly in Republicans. Um, that his uh, political committee, the Never Back Down PAC, was passing out pledge cards. Ugh. Is that true? You know, I cannot, I, I don't know, um, but I heard that is what was happening on the House floor. I know this was my third legislative session, and the final, the, the final week and a half, I've never seen so many people moving around like I did on the House floor, and, you know, many of my colleagues in the front row, so something had to have been going on. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Understood. 549-2937 if you all want to call in. Um, we did get one big project for uh, Jacksonville in the budget. Uh, the $75 million for uh, the University of Florida campus, um, you know, why are you a, smiling at me, AG? Huh? <laughs> well, it, it's the one. It's the one big accomplishment that really came through. And I mean, it's you know, what do you what do you think of that project? I mean, you know, seventy five million is a lot of money. You've talked about various projects of yours that were obviously smaller dollars than uh, than <laughs> those. Um, do you think it was the right thing? Do you think it was a political payback? Maury Hosseini, obviously, uh, you know, and Paul Renner. Um, you guys with kind of regional ties mm -hmm. um, you know so so what do you think of that project so i, I have to tiptoe around this um <laughs> you know i'm a gator yeah ag okay. um look at the end of the day i feel that uh more projects could have been funded as well as that you know uf does great things um they put out they put out great uh students like myself yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but you know, I, 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 I'm a hometown girl as well. I wish more money would have gone to, uh, UNF as well and JU for additional projects. I know that, um, there was a project that had gotten vetoed before, I think for JU, but it made it through the budget this year. But, you know, I also want to, also want to make sure, um, like EWU is taken care of as well. And so I will just say that, um, it is a shame that uh, other projects were vetoed, uh, especially when we're sitting on over $12 billion in reserves. Um, we need a governor who's going to look out for all of Florida and not just those that he has a political or monetary connection to.